somebody? Where am I sitting? You right there, bro. Right here. Whatever yep. you want, champ. You can beat all I had. <laughs> Nah. He finna be skinny, nah, Uzma and Nato, dog. He, he, he about to be skinny, Uzma. He don't wear his shirt open when he get close, I mean, to, when he get close to fight night. You know what I'm saying? I do wear it open. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, when, that's when everything is lean. That's when you can, you know, you can have... You gotta show out. Yeah. Fine. You don't ever show out, Chan. Who? Who? I can't pull out my body. My face and everything else is so appealing. Pull out the body. <laughs> Be running down the street like I just stole something. What was it that, that night we were at a spot in Vegas? Okay. We had dinner, me, you, AZ, you were with Jordan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we seen you at the table in the front, Kevin Hart, Floyd. Oh, you guys were there? Yeah, Delilah. Delilah. Yeah, Delilah. Y'all yeah, boys there. was getting it in. Yeah, yeah man. We, we was just chilling. We, we was in the see. cut. I did not know y'all was there. You it was, was a good too? night. No. Nah, that was when okay. uh, Kevin uh, shut it down and yeah. had a private event. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, I didn't know y'all was in there. Yeah, we was yeah, in the back. Sneak in the back. We, we were still almost famous. We're not. Nah. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't, still work. We couldn't oh, sit at your table, bro. You know, a little bit. <laughs> did feel like we was in the NBA. Because okay. it was a lot of, lot of short. <laughs> it was. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, hey, man. Welcome to the pivot, bro. We appreciate you. you. I know it's been a long day of training. Freddie T, Chan, I'm RC. To our partners, happy dad, you can throw me one. You know what I mean? I'll go and see. Make sure this altitude don't kill me. Don't he die. training. Please don't die. Yeah, he tra First off, I did good. I've been here all day. You have been And here I have day. not died yet. Just look weak sometimes. I'm, I don't look weak ever. Eyes, my eyes, <laughs> your eyes be low. <laughs> <laughs> to drive he can never fight. He can never fight. Well, him. man, Kamaru, bro, just first off, just thinking about your career, you know, Freddie T normally gives out the flowers. I know I mess with, you, mess with you all the time, but 15 straight UFC wins, uh, 19. You were mentioned with names and are mentioned with names like Anderson Silva and guys like John Jones, George St. Pierre as, as one of the greatest to ever do it. So for me, who I've just been a fan of this sport, man, since the early 2000s, to get an opportunity to sit down with you. Truly is an honor for as much as we go back and forth about all those things. Man, I just respect the way you approach your craft uh, and the class in which you've done it. You. you know, so I want to say that. You know, you have those accolades and you're going into fight Leon for the second time. First round, he, he throws some, some different things at you and then it's, it's regular old Kamaru for the next four rounds, and it seems like you're coasting to a win. John Anik is basically giving the eulogy to, to Leon, and then it's the kick heard around the world. When you finally come to and you get your bearings, yeah. what was your first thought? Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an ambulance? Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm so blessed to, to be able to experience certain things all through my life. You know, having to, to just really sit back and have moments to myself to reflect on certain things. It's, I've just been blessed to experience different things, you know, setbacks, victories, all of the above. And that one was as hard as it is for people to believe. I was like, man. Okay, now I know what this feels like, you know, which is, it was rare to me because everyone's like, what? You was... But I, inside, I was just like, damn, okay. Okay, it's another opportunity for me to do something. Once you're so successful and you're winning every time, it's almost like everybody are, is sitting back waiting for you to lose. That's what they want. It's almost like you, you're on human life. They're like, oh, damn, you know, people can't really relate to that. They're like, ah. You know, he's winning everything. You know, that's the thing with, I think with Floyd, kind of like the knock on him is he was so perfect in his craft and so successful to where people bought his fights just to watch him lose. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see who that guy is that was gonna beat him. You know, I think that was, he got to a certain point like that. Everyone's, you know, it's the promo every time I go out there and I defend and I defend and I defend. Everyone's like, oh man, I mean, when is he gonna lose? Mm -hmm. And so once it happened, it was like literally kick her around the world, yeah. you know? 
I was on all types of memes, you know, <laughs> I, everything. But the first thought, because after the kick landed, of course I, you know, got up. I was was up in what maybe a minute two. I got up, you know, I talked, asked my coaches, "Hey, what was that? What did you, you catch me?" Because that's what you usually ask, like what they hit me with, <laughs> right, what happened, right. you know. So you know, I think I, I asked that a few times. Obviously, when you're definitely probably a concussion, and so I came to in the ambulance. Mm. And so everything after that, you know, I'm in the cage and which is just, I'm so blessed to where it, it was, uh, it was just, everything is just natural response. You're an autopilot. And, you know, me being an autopilot wasn't me being upset, screaming inside the cage, mad, doing all of this. You know, I was just content. I watched it over and over and over just for my body and my mind to understand that, be content. I'm, I'm humble in victory and I'm humble in defeat. And I sat there, you know, shook his hand, congratulated him, walked back, hugged my family, hugged everybody. Cause I'm watching, and this, I remember this cause I'm watching the tape back, mm -hmm. hugged everyone. Um, then they told me that, hey, you should probably just go to the hospital just to, to be checked out. Cause I was fine, everything was, was good. I was back, but I wasn't back. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the ambulance, the nurse or the EMT is asking me, hey, do you know where you are? I'm like, yeah, I know where I'm at. I'm at, you know, Salt Lake City. I just fought USD 278 and it's like, oh. It was like, she was on, they were almost surprised that I knew that. I'm like, so once I said that, I'm, and I'm looking at, my manager's there with me. Shout out to my manager, Ali. And I'm just like, oh, dang. Mm -hmm. Okay, it happened. Right. But then at that moment, on the drive, as soon as we got to the hospital and I'm sitting there just waiting just to do the test, I'm, I'm instantly like, I'm so blessed to have an opportunity to be able to rebound. Because myself now as a father, you know, raising my daughter and, and she's, you know, and there's certain things where she doesn't, she don't want to do like, you know, we were in gymnastics since she was four and then, you know, it got hard. So she's like, I don't want to do it anymore. And her mom, you know, yeah, she didn't like it anymore. Let's get her out. So, you know, now I have an opportunity to show her that, hey, you can fail at something, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't just stay down. You don't quit. You get back up and you, you know, you get back on the horse and you try to, you know, be victorious in that. And so having that opportunity, I think that was the biggest thing for me. It was just like, okay, I know what the next mission is. So I was okay right there in that hospital. My mindset was, I didn't care about the memes. I didn't care about what had happened. It was just like, I was focused on that. I was like, okay, now I have an opportunity to show my daughter, you don't just lay down. Was that pressure off of you? Cause it's funny, we talked to Tyson and he was saying being that young and being undefeated and being the next one was pressure. Like you could just feel the pressure around you. Now, like you're saying, people wait for you to lose. Your ass lost. But yeah. mentally, are like you a better person. It seems like letting that pressure go of, yeah. yeah. Now, now they see me hit the ground. Yeah, it's crazy cause people don't understand that. And everyone's like, oh. What? Pressure? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's all. Because every time you go out there, as soon as you win, it's like everyone's like, oh. It's almost like people want to see you fail mm -hmm. because they want to see you humanized. They want to mm -hmm. be able to say, oh, he's just like me. He ain't no better than me. People are ready to say that. And so, yeah, every fight you win, it's like oh, you become less human-like. You know, you're more and more invincible. And everyone's like, oh, damn, oh, I can't, I'm not like him. He done won that many straight. And, oh. So everyone's waiting for you to lose, waiting for you to lose. It seems like that. And every time you go out there and defy the odds, it's like, it's a bigger pressure on your shoulder. It's bigger, the stakes get higher. Of course, and that's part of it. You know, the, the more successful you are, that bigger, the bigger that paycheck. Yeah. You know, that means now, you know, your family expect that big paycheck coming back home. <laughs> right. So that's pressure on that aspect. And then just more obligations because now it's built around me. I have to sell these fights. Mm -hmm. You know, people watch the bigger the paycheck. So now I got to do my job as an entertainer as well as a fighter. And so it's just more and more and more pressure on you. And so after that one, it was just like, okay, good. And, you know, and people couldn't. They people were like, what? What do you mean pressure's off? Pressure's off. I just got to go to London and whoop this dude and come back. I'm, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> and and yeah. with that, you know, we play a sport where it's Sunday to Sunday. Yeah. You know, it can be Sunday to Monday if we have a Monday night. Yeah. So we take that L 
you know, in order to get that taste out of your mouth, we got seven days, six or seven days in between. Yeah. But you guys, elite, you know, championship fighter, you know, you guys have a, a, a different regimen. How do you stay sane in that, in that, you know, process before you can get back in, in the uh, octagon? Like I said, I've been blessed through this journey in life to where somehow I found wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a little boy from Nigeria and then growing up in Texas, it was football and basketball. Yeah. I was tiny. <laughs> and, you know, after I got blasted freshman year, I was like, you know what, I got to do something different, you know. <laughs> and so found wrestling. You know, the assistant football coach was or the assistant wrestling coach. And he kept probing at me, why don't you come try wrestling? And I remember that, that phrase I told him. I was like, man, I don't want to get hit with chairs. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> you know, he's like, nah, not that wrestling. Because I never heard of collegiate wrestling. And so being in wrestling, you're, it's every weekend. Sometimes you'll be in a tournament. You have five matches, sometimes 10 matches for those big tournaments. So you take that first L, you're on the backside of that bracket. You got to battle back just to try to get it on that podium, get a medal. Mm -hmm. And so I've had hundreds and hundreds of wrestling matches to where I feel like all of that has prepared me for being able to get over it right away. You lose that first match, hey, too bad. You got to go back and, and let's go. You got to get back on the horse. In, in high school, my senior year, I, I thought I was going to win the state championship. I put everything into it, everything. I trained year round, all summer. I could live, I literally eat in wrestling. And I was in the semis and I got beat. As soon as I got beat, I remember I was so angry. I threw my headgear across the auto to where we were wrestling at the convention center. I was like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm not wrestling no more. And the whole team, everyone's looking at me like, and that year I'm leader of the team. Right. So I'm through my head, I'm upset. I'm like, no, I'm done. Because in my mind, I was like, I came here to win the state championship. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have an opportunity to win and I'm done. I'm not wrestling back anymore, you know? And the coach, everyone, you know, parents, some of the parents telling me, I gotta, I gotta go back and compete. Because if I don't compete, I don't get on that podium. If I don't get on that podium, I break the school streak of all state placer for I think maybe 15 years straight. And and it happened to be the first and only, the only tournament in high school my dad came to mm. that day. So now I'm in a situation where <laughs> I got no choice. I got to get back out there. So growing up, you know, you don't think about these things, but that experience of after losing, I was defeated. I was like, I, I'm done. But I had to come back, get back in the tournament, battle back and get third place. And I think things like that, they prepare you mentally to be able to deal with this. You know, I know for a lot of people, they're thinking, now you've, you've been sitting for months, yeah. you know, but it ain't nothing to me. Cause I've been, I done got whooped that day. And then guess what? You got to battle back to come back. And I've been, I done been beat in a wrestling tournament by one kid and then battle back on the backside. And that kid loses maybe in the semis, yeah, drops down. And I got to see him again. I beat him again right? And, and, and get that one back. So, you know, all of this is just things that I feel like has prepared me but then you were a spring chicken. Now mm -hmm. you're 35. True. You know, so being able to bounce back and really, you know, refocus that energy and, and, and being at that age, there are some question marks and some concerns. Are there any for you? No, but I do understand what you mean because I understand it's different now. It's different. It's harder. I know that. And I'm not, not shy of some saying that. It's different. When I was 24, I'd jump out there cold, wrestle a whole match. I'm good. <laughs> now my warm ups in 45 minutes. <laughs> and, you know, after I'm done warming up, I gotta cool down after the work. You know, right. and and my coach knows it. He he'll write the plan of the day on there. He'll write 45 minutes warm up on your own because he knows I have to. And I I've over the years I've learned to I gotta be a stickler in that. I have to make sure I get that warm up if I want to put out my best performance, I gotta make sure I get do those things. I gotta get that warm up in. I gotta make sure I'm ready for that workout. And so I do understand that I'm not, you know, a young guy anymore, but at the same time, you know, I'm doing the necessary things to make sure that I can still excel over that. And bro, not to just keep bringing up the, the head kick. I watched it. Yeah, <laughs> everybody watched but, it. DC yeah. came on with us. Sugar Sean came on with us. Izzy was on here with us. Yeah. And it was never right after a loss or after a big loss like yeah. this. That head kick. Like, is it, did, he, did, did Leon Edwards, did he find a weakness in you? Do you think about, damn, I need to keep this hand up? Like, 
after that is what got you, do you train more for that? I mean, of course you got to pay attention to detail. You know, that was the only weapon he used that worked. I mean, obviously in the first round, you know, he, he she stepped over my leg and I, I did trip and because and, I tried to throw him over, but I underestimated his leverage. And so, um, you know, these are little things that minor adjustments that you have to make now to make sure it doesn't happen anymore. But when you go into a fight, there's a lot of things that, that especially me and the way that I prepare for fights, there's a lot going on that most people do not know. Mm-hmm. There's a lot that I have to battle through just to make it to those fights. And I think that's why I've been so successful because if I don't put myself through the fire, I don't feel as confident knowing that I can deal with anything that's being thrown at me. Mm. And so, yeah, I, uh, it's a lot of bumps and bruises going into these fights. Right. And um, not to make any excuses, you know, definitely something that I was going through was a part of that. It didn't seem like it because I just, after that, I was just mopping him, you know, after that first round. But of course, he has a head kick. I know a head kick is coming, you know, block the head kick. You know, I drill that, of course, drill it repetition, repetition, so I can see it in my sleep. So, of course, I trained for that. But it was just a good kick. Yeah, know? it was just it was, perfect. Yeah, it was something that I, I know that I did wrong. Not necessarily wrong. Didn't do as well. And it was just a beautiful kick. You know, you know hats off to him. For, for us, it's, it's different in the sense that we don't, we don't lose everything because we're knocked out. In year, I think it was 11 for me, we're playing Washington, I'm balling, I take on the block, dude hits me right here, he knocks me out, I don't know it though. I wake up, the uh, trainers are around me, the officials are there, and I'm like, what y'all doing, get off me, right? And they're like, nah, yeah, take you out. So I come back the next week, I play, nothing happens. Two weeks later, it's the end of the Kansas City game, I get hit with a knee in the same spot and I'm out again. So the next week they give me this big kazoo helmet, right? And they like, I'm like, nah, I want to play. I want to go out there because to me, getting knocked out in that way it was just part of the game, but it didn't mean I lost, Yeah. right? I just had to come back and protect myself. But the thought was I couldn't change anything about who I was for being scared of being knocked out. For a fighter, is there ever or what residue is left over from a knockout like that? Because that's not just losing. Yeah. Or do you kind of look at it like, yeah, I can fix this one thing, but when I watch the tape, I dominated elsewhere and you take the positives from it? It's a good question. I don't know, to be honest, because I've never been in that position. Mm. You know, I've never, been, I've never been knocked out. I've been knocked down in practice. You know, I'd have some guys put it on me, <laughs> uh, but that's part of it. And, and I think all of that prepares you. But for me, I think, once again, I was blessed to be on a team like I started with. And I mean, we had killers. We had some of the most dangerous, literally on our team. I think that was when they did a poll, the most dangerous fighters in the UFC. We had three of the top five. Who, it was you, Gaethje was there? No, no, oh, back on my, on my team, what okay. I started with, we had Sugar Rashad Evans. Okay. We had Tiago Silva. Yeah. We had Vitor Belfort, Alistair Overeem. Tyrone Spawn, oh, yeah, Cosmo, yeah. Alexander, George Santiago, we Jay-Z Kavaka, I'm talking. These were some of the most vicious fighters out there, all on the same team. Mm-hmm. You know, Anthony Rumble Johnson, I had to spar him sometimes. Guy rest the soul. I mean, soul. yeah, you know, big bro. And and it was when you get when you get used to being able to get beat up by these dudes. <laughs> It was just like, I'm, there's no fear here. Iron sharp and iron. Yeah, yeah, there's no fear here because I had to take kicks from AJ. Right. I mean, that's a bear. And I had to take kicks from him, take shots from, I mean, you take a shot from him, it'll, it'll crack your neck. Right. Just how hard they hit. And so getting used to that, I, you know, for me, it was nothing. You know, so with this, in this situation, I don't know, to be honest. I've never been in, the, in this position, but I know mentally, nothing changed for me. Mm. And I look at the fight, I'm like, this is the same guy that I beat up before. Yeah. You know, it's still gonna be the same guy. Yes, of course, he can try to sharpen some things and clean it up, but I gotta remind him who he is right away. And so that, he needs to know that. The way you put that is different, though, mm-hmm. right? A lot of times, 
former champs and dominant fighters like yourself say, I need to remind him who I am. You said you need to remind him who he is. Yeah. What does that mean? Why did you say it that way? Because he knows who I am. Everybody knows who I am. And I say that because this is where I think I've always deferred from most fighters is when I fight a guy, I'm not fighting his skills. I'm not fighting, oh, he's good at this, he's good at that. I'm not fighting that. I'm fighting his heart. When I fight guys, I fight their heart because I want to break their heart. I want a guy that when he's done fighting me, he's like, fuck, I never want to feel that again. Mm. That is my thing. When I fight guys, I want to break their spirit, break their soul. And I learned this when I was wrestling, you know, being able to have all those wrestling matches year after year after year. In wrestling, I was never the guy to pin somebody. I did get some pins, but I was never that guy to pin somebody. I was the guy that would tech fall somebody. For those of you who don't know what a tech fall is, is when you're beating somebody by 15 points, it's like a skunk. It's like mm. they have to stop the match because you're just beating them too bad. That was what I did. I wanted to run up the scoreboard on guys. I wanted to, so they felt embarrassed on the inside because they knew that shit, I cannot compete with this guy. He's just much better than me. So that's when I fight guys, that's the approach that I have. He knows that. He, he was, you saw the fight. He was, he was dead on the inside. He was, oh, I'm dead. There's nothing. I have no answers yet. In between round four and five. I have no sure. answers. Fuck. I did not realize he was this bad, this good. I for, no, it wasn't I didn't realize. I forgot he was this damn good. He whooped me before. That was only three rounds. Now it's five rounds. I, I can't deal with him. All right, I'm going to just try something. I have to. And it just happened that it worked. And so, yeah, I, don't, I, did, I never forgot who I was, and I'm not forgetting who I am. I have to remind him who he is. Go, go back. That, that's tough. <laughs> that, that's tough because <laughs> think about it. <laughs> think about it. Remember, we had Saquon on, and the thing I told Saquon Barkley was that, look, before you can go and remind anyone else who you are, you got to remind yourself, which I wanted to pose the question, was it going to take – or is it going to take this fight for you to remind yourself that you are the champ? But you said you got to remind. He has. I'm. F I'm f up. I don't even remember <laughs> what you said. Because you got a little scared, like I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got I, got a little, little, I got a little scared. You don't force me to do that. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, that's 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 big talk. No, like it, that's big. Yeah. You 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 right. I never forgot who I was. You know, that was one of the biggest takeaways while I'm sitting in the hospital and, and I'm like, damn, I really just lost. Oh, well, now I get to show everybody because at, at some point you get to this place where you're just, you're winning so much and you're almost unrelatable. Mm. People can't relate to that, you know? And I think that was kind Not of human. a- I, yeah, and I think that was kind of a, the thing with Floyd. Like, why doesn't Floyd? Why isn't Floyd the poster boy for Nike? Think about that. I mean, it's Floyd. He should be the poster boy for every brand: Coca Cola, mm -hmm. Nike, everything. The biggest brands in the world. It's unrelatable. You know, no one is as perfect as that, and he was perfect. And so it's like, boom, that had situation happen. I'm like, wow. Now I have an opportunity to show the world that you can fall but I'm gonna get back up. Go back to uh, the Olympic trials. Yeah. In which you, di you didn't qualify. No. Was that a moment where it was a, 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 a huge letdown or a bless more so a blessing in disguise or a moment where you said, let me go and show everybody what I can really do? It was, it was, it was a combination of everything. Um, initially it was, a, it was a letdown, but deep down inside, and that's the one thing about me what I also think that I was blessed with is I'm honest with myself. I'm very honest with myself. And I knew that I wasn't putting everything into, into making it to the Olympics, you know, because I started cheating on wrestling. I had been poked and probed by MMA. You know, dudes was like, oh man, you know, Rashad Evans texting me, bro, you know you don't wanna be there wrestling. You know you wanna do this. You know you wanna come make this money. You know, you training hard for wrestling, one of the hardest sports in the world fly all the way to India, wrestle two days, all this tournament, say, 
you're fortunate and you win a tournament, you get maybe a check for 5,000, you know? And, you know, I help these fighters, I help a fighter go fight. And this fighter knocks the dude out, boom, 75,000 bonus. On mm -hmm. top of his pay, I'm like, yo, I'm in the wrong sport. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. Right. And, and it didn't help with guys like Rashad Evans probing you like, well, you know you want to come over here and do this. You know, you could do this. You know, you'd be, you be good at this. And when you have one of the best guys in the world, and at that time, you know, I looked up to Rashad because, you know, this is a guy that looked like me. You know, yep. he swagged like me, he talked like me, you know. And he doing it at the top. Okay, if he say I can do this, you know, let me let me believe in myself and do this. So deep down inside, I had already kind of started cheating on wrestling, you know, because it, it's at the Olympic level, it takes maybe that little bit of a margin that separates the Olympic champion and the guy that got 14th place. And so I knew that at some point I, I a move had a move had to be made. And yeah, it was a bit of a letdown. But at the same time, I already found my next love. I was like, okay, I'm all in. I'm I'm a I'm gonna do this. I'm all in. So I after I left, you know, moved down to Florida, I was like, okay, I'm gonna show them. I ain't get that Olympic medal, but I'm gonna show them. That was a decision that's obviously paid off for you. The the money is much different for you now, yeah. especially when you get to the point you get to, but you have a lot to lose when you get to the top. Yeah. Your daughter is watching you fight. And we all have girls. We're Superman, you know, and we we build it up to them that they are beautiful and we are here to protect their beauty. And that's a part of our, what I've loved seeing about you is that, yeah, I go out and I fight and I this, but I love my baby. What has that been like for you just in saying, okay, now I get to show my daughter how to bounce back, but just feeling that love for somebody that in a moment like that, your thought is, this is a lesson I can teach my baby. That was probably uh, having her at the fight because she's only been to maybe four fights. And that was probably the hardest, the only thing that, that, that broke my heart. Probably the only moment that's broken my heart dealing with her is, um, so I got to watch while in the hospital, I got to watch, uh, cause you know, fans are, that's the thing with the sport, fans are ruthless. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in our sport, you know, I'm, 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 I'm dad, I'm, you know, I'm super, I'm in this invincible guy. And she's watched me win countless times, even if it's not there live, it's at home. She's watched me win over and over. And the child's head, that's just what's normal. That is just gonna go in, and come back home. You know, people don't really realize what I risk every time I go in there. And so, the kick lands, because I'm in the hospital now. I'm seeing the clip, and the camera pans out into my family, and my daughter is crying, and that broke my heart big time, because I'm like, first of all, I, a little piece of me was a little angry. It's like, why would the camera? Why would they do that? And then of course, fans will pause it, screen grab it, and then post it, and that was the only thing that broke my heart. So when I saw that, I was just like, I didn't care that I lost. I was in the hospital with me and my manager, we you shooting and shit, we talking. And I'm just like, I saw that and my heart just stopped. I was like, oh shit. But then quickly, all right, okay. This is the moment. This is how I have to, I have to, I have to show her, to remind her. And so of course, the hospitals, you know, when you're in the hospital, then they, they never quick. Of course, do all the scans and whatnot. And I fought around maybe, midnight so i'm there to maybe 2 3 a.m and i get back and i go to the house i'm staying at and everyone of course my immediate family's there my whole team's there and and i'm looking for her but she's laying down in my bed already and on the other side of the house so i you know of course i'm i tell everybody relax it's all good you know we get it back what happens you win some you lose some you know and I go into the room and she's sleeping. And I just lay down next to her and we, we pass out. 
and we wake up in the morning and, and I just have a conversation with her right there. You know, and I just talk to her and tell her, it's okay, that is fine. You see me, I'm here next to you. She's like, okay, and she tells me she loves me. And that's the crazy thing is like, you know, when your little girl tells you they love you and they hold you, it's just, <laughs> you know, I feel all soft. She's made me so soft <laughs> on the inside. And, um, but that's the, the beautiful thing also about kids. Like, boom, she was good the next day. She moved on. What are we gonna eat? Right. How are we gonna, what are we gonna play with? You know, what are we gonna do? You know, we, we talked, we hung out, fed her whatever she wanted to eat. We got on a plane, went back home. You know, same, same routine. We land, get her ready on Monday, drive her to school. She's good. You know, that, that right there is, is, is major for me just to show her that. But at the same time, it gives me, like I said, it gives me that opportunity to let her know now that, you know, you don't stay down. You only lose when you stop. This is so interesting to me. You never plan to lose. Like you never had a, oh, if I lose this fight, this is how it's going to be. So how was that with everybody else? The daughter thing, that got me tearing up. I got my baby too, and we, we have our own secret language that nobody yeah. else knows. <laughs> you know, we do goofy stuff for our kids. But the, the, I thought of you said you, you got that and your family's there. So you, your whole career you fight, and it's always hand slaps and hugs and that. <laughs> yeah. Now you get home and you done got knocked to sleep. Yeah. Do people even talk about the fight? Do they act like it didn't happen? Like, what is, what is a champion what is it like with everybody around you the night a champion loses his belt? It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad because you, you come in there, everybody looks like somebody just died. <laughs> they stay quiet, everybody, especially, you know, if it's, it's champion, you, you lost everything. They know that, that that money now is different, you know. So, <laughs> so everybody's sad now. Everybody looking at you like, is he going to charge at us? What's going on? He's mad. <laughs> You know, like I said, I was I was over it at the at the hospital. So I'm coming in, I'm like, why y'all sad? Why y'all look like somebody died? Right. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, I've realized that this is bigger than just it's just at the it's just, yeah, it's a sport. It's as real as it gets, but it's still a sport. Yeah. You know, as long as I still have my faculties and I'm alive, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. And you know, of course, that check cushions the blow a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. But but I'm I saw good. I saw I saw it. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's, I'm good. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you know they put it on this thing called the internet now. That, <laughs> that's that's false reporting. That ain't, that, ain't, that wasn't really it. And they just guessing. Yeah, 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 they guessing. They just oh, guessing. Yeah. So hey, you, uh, you're a superstar now. So bro. so they get you big money. Yeah, it's you know we do all right. We do all right. <laughs> but it's you know everyone's quiet. Everyone's like you know, of course or your family, your immediate family, but. Early on in my career, I learned this is, um, and I'll, I've always expressed this to some of my guys that I'm close with, is at the end of the day, especially when you're winning, when you're so successful, everybody want to be around. Mm. It's just something so infectious and something so radiant about being a champion, being being a top. Ali couldn't go nowhere. Everywhere he went, it was a crowd, people following him. Now, I'm a little bit of an introvert, so it's a little different. You know, My entourage is not that big. But it's that people want to be near greatness. They want mm -hmm. to smell it. They want to feel it. Maybe hopefully to rub off on them. People, people are just like that. And I understood early on that it doesn't matter. People want to be around you because of that. But win or lose, people that come to see you that night, they're going to go to the club. They're going to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's better when you won. They want to celebrate with you. But whether you lost or not, guess what? They came to celebrate. They brought their girls out. You know, they brought they they was in their best clothes. You know, they was ready to go out after. You know, we're gonna go to this fight and we're gonna go out to this place after. They're gonna do that. And guess what? On Monday, they're all gonna go back to work. Mm -hmm. I have to live with it, whether I won or I lost. I gotta sit in my house. Damn, I got knocked out from the world. So I understood that early on. So I don't really put too much on that. You know, whatever people are thinking, what they're saying. Now it's a little annoying when you go to the store and, you know, I still, you know, sneak off and go to the grocery store here and there, but people see, hey, what's up, man? You're going to get it back, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I know. Thank you. I got you. You saw it too. Yeah. 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 For, <laughs> for you, though, you have reached that level of superstardom, which is difficult in your sport. One, it's difficult to win enough 
And also you mentioned earlier being able to entertain. When you look at guys like Connor, Izzy, you, you've been able to captivate people in a charismatic way. Now that, that not all fighters have. Um, it was cool you were in Wakanda forever. And obviously with Nigerian roots and having an opportunity to be a part of a film like that, what was it like for you? Because it just struck me when you mentioned greatness, you were around all types of greatness on that set. What was that like for you? It was different. You know, we all watch movies and we all, man, I can do that. I can act, I can do that. You know, but until you're actually there, then you really understand how difficult that is. So that was one aspect. But then it's, you know, first day on set, I'm, we're shooting the big scene. I'm in the council room. And right in front of me is Angela Bassett. I'm like, damn, that's how Stella got a groove back. <laughs> I've been in love with her since I was 10. Yeah. I've been in love with her since I was 10. That's how right there. I could have been Tay Diggs. <laughs> been me. So I'm in my scene, that, I'm, that's the scene we're shooting that day, my first day on set. And I'm 10 feet away from her. You know, she's saying, nah, I don't have to. And I'm, I'm look over and it's, it's Danny. And it's, it's, it's my good friend, Michaela Cole in the room. And it's, it's Denai, you know, who plays Okoye. And it's, it's, it's everyone. It's Winston, who was in Baku, is there. And, and I'm just like, oh, shit's really going down today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at that time I had maybe, I think I had one line in the script at the time, which is, you know, shout out to Ryan, you know, the director, you know, what an amazing director. And, you know, Ryan's always, Always thinking, he's always changing things. Okay, I like that. This this sounds more natural. This is more comfortable. So of course they're throwing more lines, you know, that day. So I'm sitting there trying to do these lines. The whole time I'm like, damn, I'm in front of Angela. <laughs> <laughs> That's Stella. <laughs> That's Michael Jackson, mama. <laughs> All these thoughts going through my head. I'm like. All right, though, but but get it together, though. You can't can't mess you can't fuck the line up because you got one line. Don't mess that up, <laughs> you know. So, and that's the thing with with the, on set, you're shooting these scenes over and over and over and over, and then they gotta flip the cameras, they gotta, you know, boom, they gotta do all these different things, and and we're doing the scene, we're doing it over and over and over, but I'm so captivated by what they're doing. <laughs> So they do their line, this person say their line, this person say their line, Angela says her line. And I'm just like, <laughs> and it's quiet on set. Everyone's like, whose line? Oh shit, that's my line. Not in front of Angela. So I, I played it all smooth, quickly said it, you know, I'm like, you know, yeah, you know, someone was forgot. But then we, you know, I picked it back up and uh and we did the we did the scene, but it was such an amazing experience to be able to to watch something like that because it's literally almost the opposite of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we, what we do is as real as it gets. We are fighting, literally doing that. And these actors and actresses are masters of making you believe this is real. Yeah. You know, they're doing a scene, they're pretending to be a character, making you believe that that's real. So for them, they master that skill and I'm sitting there like, they are, this is fake. They are, you know, I just want to punch somebody. And, and you know, and, and these are really masters of making you believe that. But I was, I was blown away because there was a couple of times on set when she, they did the scenes and we almost cried. Right. You know, we, the whole set clapping because it was just masterful with what they do. So to be there after Chadwick passes and was, the movie obviously had many opportunities to give him respect and they paid respect to him, but it didn't feel like you were paying respect to King T'Challa. It felt like you were watching Chadwick Boseman in some sort of funeral every time you saw it. Could you feel that on the set? Yeah, it was a, it was a big cloud you know, over that, the whole production, the movie, because, you know, a movie like that, you don't realize how big he was, how monumental he was for that movie until, you know, you have seen it. Of course, as a fan watching the first one, I knew how big he was to it. You know, that's that movie, that's, you don't even think of all the mo other movies he did. That's Black Panther, right? you know, that's our hero. And so being on set 
and watching everybody and how they, you know, it was like a cloud over everyone. Some of the actors and actresses were sad because he really made the movie. He was, you know, it, it felt like him and Ryan were partners mm -hmm. in, in doing this movie. And so the day we shot that funeral, it was a very emotional day. I mean, some of the, the previous cast members were crying. They had a hard time actually shooting that. And it was just so powerful to shoot. Even myself, I was there a couple of times, I tear up, you know, of course I had to wipe it quickly, you know, like, cause you know, I wasn't there for the first one, right. but I felt it. And, and even what they, you know, when the movie came out, yeah, they kind of went through it fast, that tribute, but if they had really, you know, they cut some scenes, but if they had let put a, a couple of the other scenes in it, I don't know anybody in the theater that wouldn't have cried, you know, right. because of how powerful that movie was. No, they got me with baby T'Challa at the end. Don't do yeah, that to me. Yeah, yeah, they got me. Don't hide baby T'Challa. <laughs> they got me a few times. They got me a few times. <laughs> Were there moments on set when they looked at you to to pick your brain about about fighting? Because th there there's a lot that goes into it more than fi fighting. Yeah. The training, the whole thing to get to becoming a champ. Were there moments? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was kind of weird too because it was like. You know, when you step into a different element, into their element, so I'm, I'm, I'm there for now. I'm learning something new. I'm a newbie at this. And I, I remember it was one day, uh, Ryan, the director, he's such a cool dude, you know, and it's, you think of Hollywood directors, you think of how, cut, let's do it again. You know, that's what you think about. But then I, you know, I'm, I'm on set and this dude with the cool bop, you know, he got the cool bop, the Compton bop, you know, walking and I'm, that's that's the director, that's the dude in charge. Right. Got the bop, and then he'll come up to you and he's like, how you doing, you good? Everything, everything good? All right, let me know if you need anything, all right? You know, <laughs> I'm right. like, this dude cool as hell. <laughs> like, it, it was almost too cool. Right. And so, you know, every now and then he would come in, this your, this your first movie? I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, what a movie to start, huh? It's a good one to start on, I'm like, yeah, now now I'm nervous, you know, <laughs> to be in a big movie like this. And this is my first mate like movie. And and so but he was just so we made it so nice. And then it's like some of the other cast members, once they started to discover, oh, that's who that is. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, oh, okay. You know, and I made some some amazing friends like myself and, and Winston Mbaku. We had the little thing in the movie. Right. But me and him got real cool. You know, we spent some time together offset. And Michaela Cole, who's it was on the cover of Vogue. She has her own show called I May Destroy You, was a major show, won an Emmy. Um, we are made like brother and sister. We talk all the time. You know, so I, I was able to still make friends out of there. But with her, it was just picking my brain with certain things. And she's, you know, we're bouncing things off each other because I'm like, how are y'all able to pretend so good and, and make us believe <laughs> it's you know? so good? And so it's like bouncing things off of each other. And she's a writer as well, an amazing writer. So, you know, it, it was, once again, all I can just sum it up to is just being blessed to be at the right place at the right time. And, and I saw the premiere. You came to the premiere, you were fresh. I mean, you were clean <laughs> as a hospital you syringe. Know, but you know my man gonna and, hate. But no, know. that's why I like I have an ally. He can't dress, right? No. No, he can't hell? dress. The, the thing is, and Thank I said you. this to I said this to him earlier. Less is more. You don't understand the power that you have of just being subtle. Yeah. But he wanna put the red vampire suit on. You seen the red one? It was, uh -huh. it was a red. I was like, well, you got the red toys on. <laughs> <laughs> you, look like, you look like you was a vampire in, in Brooklyn. Eddie Murphy. I mean, <laughs> bro. I, when it was one, I have to give it to him though. It was one, he had a, a like a dark navy blue suit on with maybe stripes on it. Subtle with the white and the tie. I was like, man, that looked clean on him. Yeah. That was nice. But if you, you Ooh, be wanting to do too much. Come on, go overboard. Bro, yeah, he be wanting to do too bro, much. You yeah. wore tube socks, yeah. shorts, yeah. a double breasted with no mm -hmm. shirt. And you see how and, fly that was too. So, so, but that's not too much. N see, that was an event. You got to understand, you know, appropriate time and place. You on TV. You on NFL Network. You can't be wearing a vampire suit. You on NFL Network. Come on. Come on. Can we have a catalog contest? Hey. Oh, we can. Yeah. So you understand. You know. We Powerful bring him on the show. Power. You know. So we bring him on the show. He's been on Step and Fly a few times. Now, of, of the guys that fight, he's one of them that actually looks at it and says, okay, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to dress. He does dress 
like a champion. Oh, I'm the flops. But the fact that he said, I do too much, is absolutely, <laughs> unequivocally, <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. He wears seven chains like Mr. T. Hey, <laughs> that was a look. See, that's the thing, it's a look. You got an event, you gotta have a look for the event. Not when I'm on TV. You see, I've done, a, I'm an analyst too for ESPN. When I'm sitting there talking about the fight, I'm in a nice suit, mm -hmm. you know, calm. So I'm, you, you I'm, dress I'm like Max my... Kellerman. I could dress like Max Kellerman. Max be fly sometimes too. Max wear the same gonna, three Tom Ford lie. suits. He, but he be, be nice. And you listen to what he got to say. With you, I got to just look at your outfit. You know what he's I don't done? even hear what you say. Hey, you know what he's done? Outfit. He's forgotten about the motherland, and he has now let the man make him wow. think that he has to be subdued. You see, you see me at the Izzy fight? Huh? You see you me at the Izzy fight with the Cavalli with the... You clean. See? Also, also you, he too. need to dress you. Can you consult with him? Hell though? no. I can, can, you got you to see? Up, though. Oh, you I have, a, you have get a you hooked up. Hey, also, too, by the way, man, I just want to let you know, Kamaru, I obviously am fans of you guys already, and I have attachments to certain fighters. I can be honest, yeah. the same way you had an attachment to Rashad, I have an attachment to you. I have an attachment to Izzy. So we did Izzy before the Alex fight, yeah. right? The depression mm. amongst our group chat after the fifth round of that, we can't take no more, bro. I know. I mean, it's, it's how crazy is Francis, it? Francis, you. Yeah, I know. Thinking about it and just trying to, to comprehend everything that's transpired is how crazy is it? You know, what a coincidence. Myself and Izzy became champion within a couple months of each other. Same year. Defending the belt multiple times. Myself and Izzy, both lost. Dominating. Similar way. God. Winning fights in the last round. Same year. It's crazy. It's, just, it's weird when you actually think of certain things and how coincidences just happen. But it's, you know, once again, we have to go out there and rewrite history and once again do it. How does that happen in London? This is the thing too, and, and I, I'm, like I said, I'm honest with myself all the time to where I understand that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult this time. Because once you've broken through that, like in his head, he forgot what happened four rounds before that. Hell You're like, yeah, yeah I won. I landed the kick. I'm the champ. You know, I'm, I'm good. But he forgot what happened. You forgot that I was taking your soul. And so I have to remind him who he is, a guy that has let somebody take your soul twice. And I'm going to take it in London. Once I remind him of that and I take it, and this is the part that makes it so addicting for me, is after the fight. It's always, I always look after the fight. That's what I'm looking forward to. When you're sitting back there in the medical tent and they're cutting your gloves off and they, the doctor's talking to you, checking your face, checking you, making sure you gotta, you need to break anything. The feeling, it's a, it's a deep breath you take back there of completion. That right there is so addicting to me. This is why I continue to do it. When you're back there and you take that deep breath, and then the lady comes in with the clipboard and she's, you know, gotta sign a check and let you know what this is. Here you go. It's just something about that moment for me that is intoxicating. And that's what I look forward to. And so when I go out there in London, I just, there's no pressure on me. I'm not the champion, you're the champion. Now you at home, and a lot of people underestimate what that is at home. Everyone's saying, oh, you gotta go into enemy territory and, and take the belt from that. But I've been whipping dudes at they school for years. <laughs> In college, I done went to different schools and whooped dudes bad. And so that ain't nothing to me. I'm going, this is a business trip. I'm going there to take care of business. You the one who got to deal with family members calling you, hey, you got those extra tickets for us? Hey, you got this for us? Hey, okay, Leon, you can't lose at home. You can't do this. You got to deal with all that. I don't. I'm just here for this business transaction. That was beautifully said, but I have something that you said in there. You get a paper check for that much money that you no, get? No, you don't get a paper check no more. You just more, said the lady gotta, come back yeah, and write Yeah, she come the, back and sign in and show you the amount. Okay, this, this is what we... Like, right yeah. after the fight, you know, yeah. oh, I fought oh, yeah. for this. Yeah. Damn, that's... Course, you got to request then, that or everybody gets no, that? No, they, because they got to come back there and let you know the deductions now. Like, hey, hey, we took, took five. You took a thousand off of this for that. You would want an extra flights for this person, that person. Yeah, we got that on there. Sign that. You sign that. All right, good. You leave the arena knowing how much bread you buy. Yeah. Bought. That's because you straight. I didn't you, know that. You, you know, 
most of the times you have good, for me, I've always had good nights except August 20th. Yeah. So, but at least, you know, when I, you, after that night, you sitting at home, looking on Monday, waiting for that direct deposit. Tuesday, <laughs> boom, hit, all right, what I'm finna buy? <laughs> but but didn't, I'm buy did, something. didn't one come in August too? What? Didn't a nice one come in August? Yeah, too? it came in August. It comes at it comes Tuesday, that following Tuesday. Yeah, yeah but because you know things, they they do the transactions, everything is good. So you know you go home, with looking at the bank Monday, Tuesday. Once you see all them zero, okay, yeah. But do you look at the losing zeros mad, or do you, do they still make you happy? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm Man, in a position to just, win. Just yeah. 18 million. I mean, I'm in a position. <laughs> <laughs> just bullshit ass 18 million. I'm in a position now where it's, I mean, it still makes you happy. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, ah, damn, I could have added a couple of extra. Yeah. could have yeah. added those. Yeah. Yeah. I could have used that, you know, but, all right, we'll get it back next do you, time. Do you, do you got, being that the fight is in London, uh, across the pond, do you guys have an option if you get paid in dollars a pound or no? <sighs> I mean, you could, but I live here, you know? I'll just wait till that direct deposit hit on Tuesday. I'm good. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah CPA on the list. Yeah, I'm good there. <laughs> Man, you know? I think uh, for us, you know, I've had very short opportunities to talk to you. This is why I wanted to do it. I wanted to know more, and I wanted the world to see more about the man. Um, obviously, one of the greatest fighters to ever step in the octagon, the way you've pursued your career shows that, but it's gonna be the man that shows up in London with an opportunity to redeem himself and remind other people who they are, man. We can't wait to watch it. I'll be in the house. Yes. Uh, hope to see you victorious athletes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, for me, it's, I'm always somewhat, I'm always almost content after each and every performance because like I said, uh, part of the reason why I am where I am is because I'm so hard on myself. I'm very honest with myself. And I'm, I'm one of those guys to where I don't want to leave any stone unturned in preparation. And so I, if I have to go in with a fractured foot, if I have to go in with a torn hand, a broken hand, I'm going to do it. But I know that I prepared and I gave everything in preparation for this fight. So when I come to London, I'm coming with everything. So when I leave there, when I walk out of that octagon, with that bell, I know I'm, I'm content with myself. If it's not in the cards and God's like, you know, nah, you know, well, I want you to do something else, it's okay. Cause I know I prepared, I did everything possible to get it and I'm content with that. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward for the opportunity, as I've said, for, for my daughter to, to watch. Right now we're kind of, her mom is kind of trying to, hey, we going to London, we, we not going, we going, we not going. <laughs> You know, so for me, it's, I mean, that, you know, battling whether she's going to come to London or not, but it doesn't change the fact that, you know, it's a business transaction for me. And I have to be a different, I'm a different person at that time, you know, because my daughter, one thing that she does very well is she can flip the switch on daddy and Nigerian nightmare. She's very good at flipping that switch on and off. Mm -hmm. A big example was when I fought in... Jacksonville, the first fight back with fans, and I fought Masvidal the second time. Mm -hmm. You know, land the punch, Masvidal's out. The high that you get from that moment, you are on a, you're walking on a cloud, and I'm there, and I'm, it's almost like superhuman gladiator mode, energy that you're feeling, and I'm in that space. I'm straight, prime, I can't even remember what's going on. I'm outside the cage. Um, I'm beating my chest, I'm walking around, and I come back into the cage. And I'm still this animal that was just in there. And I turn around and my daughter's there and it just <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the video back and I'm just, I'm, hey baby, <laughs> how are you, did you? And I'm just daddy, right. and, you know, so that that's gonna, it, it's right now I'm battling with, you know, whether letting her be there because, you know, she we're affectionate towards one another. So she's gonna wanna love on me and, and be mm -hmm. close and but I have to be a different person. And so, you know, I have to make that decision very soon and, and but at the end of the day, going to London, business trip, go we'll take care of business and show her that, hey, you can fall. It's okay to fall, but you gotta get back up. It's a wrap.
Appreciate you, brother. Hey, you said some stuff on that now, dog. Damn, you, dog. you scared a little bit. I'll be about to fight that 170. Stealing soul. Yeah, yeah. 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 Watch me tell that boy. I don't want to fight you. I'll remind him who he is. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they had to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they had to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up.